She is an artist acclaimed for her innate sense of colour, tone and compositional balance. She is a veteran of more than 25 exhibitions and her work has received international acclaim. Her images of everyday Sri Lankan life have been featured in international publications. ETV Power Women proudly presents Iromi Wijewardena. Hi and welcome to ETV Power Women. Um, now today we have with us the hugely talented artist um, Iromi Wojewodna. Hi Iromi and welcome to the show. Hello Minoli. Iromi, I, I wanted to ask you actually whether sort of painting and art was a passion of yours from childhood. Is it something you started at a quite sort of young age? Yes Minoli, painting was a childhood passion uh -huh. and a childhood ambition. Okay. So I started experimenting with different styles right. and my mother started sending me to different art schools okay. and I kept on developing my style yeah. and uh, of course when I was in school I wasn't sure whether I was going to take to fashion designing or painting. Okay. So while I was still in school I used to design to the newspapers, wow. just sketches, fashion design sketches. Then in 1973, I thought, now I'm going to branch out, yeah. and I started on painting. There again, I was experimenting into landscape painting, uh, figure compositions, and in 1973, while I was at Ladies College, I had my first exhibition. Okay. Uh, that was all landscapes. Was that quite nerve-wracking, showing off your work for the first Not time? Not really, because it was a collection of many years, okay. and it was uh, quite a success, the exhibition. But as a schoolgirl, you know, you don't take all that into account yeah. and you just go on painting. Uh, so then I, after a while, I felt I want to start figure compositions. Right. And because I felt landscape painting wasn't creative enough for yeah. me. It didn't give you enough scope yes, to kind Yes, of so I started on um, uh, doing uh, live models, okay. painting with live models, went to various life classes because as you know, we don't get uh, models freely here yeah. in Sri Lanka. So uh, that's how I started off. So Rumi, I know one of your paintings was actually sort of turned into a Yugoslavian stamp. How did that sort of come uh, about? Actually, I mean, only it was, I didn't design a stamp. Yeah. This painting was a gift by the Sri Lankan government yeah. to the Non-Aligned Countries Gallery, which is in Yugoslavia, in right. Titograd, where all the non-aligned countries had to uh, con uh, gift a painting or a sculpture. Okay. So from Sri Lanka, my painting was selected. Yeah. And one year after, the Yugoslav government printed a stamp on it. That's amazing. And that's actually the first time a painting of an artist, Sri Lankan artist, yeah. has been uh, turned into a stamp. That's incredible. Yes. That must have been such a source of pride for you. I mean, you know, it's just yes, a wonderful... Yes, it was. Initially, I got a shock when, I, when this was sent by the cultural ministry to yeah. me. I had a look at it and then I realized, wow, I have created history. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. I mean, immortalized your art. Um, so tell us a little bit about, I mean, I know you said you studied under a lot of different sort of, um, sort of art teachers. Mm -hmm. How did you really kind of find your and develop your style? Uh, I went, as you know, all children are sent to Cora Abraham art classes, Amra yeah. Sekra classes, all that. And then actually I, started with Ivo Baptist. Right. He was a great landscape artist of Sri Lanka. Yeah. I studied under him for about five years. Okay. And then that's the time I was really developing this style of landscape. Then after that, for my good luck, the um, Institute of Aesthetic Studies, University of Kalania, yeah. started the first degree program. Right. Okay. So I was one of the first batches to get into that. Yeah. And there I was able to do many different styles and also, um, I did textile designing, yeah. uh, leather designing, wow, so and so many different sculpture, yeah. painting, everything. So that gave me a very good exposure into yeah. so many different fields. Then one year after, I won a scholarship to America. Yes, that's right. And that's where I further, uh, further the technique of painting and yeah. sculpture. And also, I did bronze casting there okay. as well. 
My goodness, <laughs> you've done quite a lot. <laughs> but now I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I'm a full-time painter. Okay. But that's how I have been doing it, you know. Um, experimenting a lot. Yeah. And then and finally, finally you arrive at, yes, what wow. you want to do. So how do you, where does your inspiration come from? I mean, when you sit down with a blank canvas, how do you kind of think, okay, this is what I want to do, or this is... Uh, actually, I start uh, sketching when I go out. Yeah. I'm always with my sketchbook. Okay. And I keep sketching, and then I come back uh, to my studio, and I get it onto the canvas. Yeah. But what really inspires me are the village life right. and women. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yes, village life and people. Yeah. And also the cultural aspect of Sri Lanka. Which is wonderful. Yes. I mean, I think we have such a diverse range of, you know, different subject matter to, to cover, being such an incredible island. I mean, you must have a, a lot to pick and choose from. Well, I, there was a time when I had two different styles. Yeah. I was also very much into uh, temple painting. Okay. And that was the Candian period, which I was really interested in. Yeah. So I was influenced by the temple painting as well. Yeah. And I didn't copy directly from the uh, temples. Yeah. I used the Candian period style and did my own uh, themes. Yeah. Uh, that again, the village life into yeah. the Candian period style of painting. Uh. And also, I used to treat the painting, the canvas, like an old wall, dilapidated wall. Okay. And uh, start working on that. And find the final product was as if it was a very old wall. That and uh, you know to give the effect of a traditional yeah, period, traditional so temple painting. Oh wow! And actually, the royal procession was done on that style. Yeah, which is which is incredible yes. actually. So I mean, you said you've studied sculpture as well. Has that been something that you've sort of done? Have you done many much? I've, I've done a few. I've done a few because you just have to do that whether you yeah. like it or not. When you're in doing a fine arts degree, yeah. you have to do everything. And then like graphic art. And okay. yes, you have to do everything and then it's up to you in the third year to and decide. the fourth year to specialise in whatever you want to do. Oh, wow. And I also understand, I mean, you were telling us that you had an interest in fashion and yes. uh, design. I understand that you designed a sari, actually, that was worn by uh, one of the Miss Sri Lankas. Yes. <laughs> uh, that was a that. time when I was doing a, a one-of-a-kind silk saris. Okay. And uh, this particular time, it was this beauty queen and she was going to wear a peacock. She right. was going to dress like a peacock. Okay. And I had to do the entire sari, the Candian sari. My goodness. Uh, yes, <sighs> like a, a peacock. And she wore it for the Miss Universe contest in Singapore. Wow. And this particular sari was also touched up with the sequins and uh, all kinds of beads and all that. And it came out beautiful. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I also wanted to ask, I know that you've won over 16, 17 awards throughout yes. your career, yes. one of them being the Zonta yes. uh, Award. Um, what, was that, what was it like to receive that? I mean, how did that happen? Is it the Zonta Award? Yes, the Zonta. Oh, well, that, uh, I think somebody nominated uh -huh. uh, uh, my name and then uh, there was a selection committee right. and that's how I was selected for fine arts. Did you ever think that you were going to win it? Was it, you know, something you thought well, no, not really. Or did really. it come as a complete surprise? It was a surprise, yes, of <laughs> course. Wonderful. And, I mean, you've won numerous awards, uh, which I actually want to talk to you about, um, but we've got to take a little bit of a break. Um, but when we come back, I'd like to touch on and have a chat to you about that. Um, we're going to be back soon with more from the talented Aromi Wajay Wadana. So please don't go anywhere. We'll see you after the break. Hi, and welcome back to EZV Power Women. Um, before we took a break, I was chatting to Aromi um, about the many awards that she's won. Um, and also, Aromi, I wanted to ask you, you know, your work has been described as cheery and escapist. I mean, is this how you view your, your work? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I like to uh, portray the Sri Lankan woman. Yeah and uh, give her the stature of homemaker, a breadwinner, yeah. and mother, and give that kind of a, a portrayal. portrayal of the woman. And most of 
my paintings are on women. Yes. Because women are taken for granted. <laughs> and yeah. I would like to portray different women in my paintings. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, but I'm very lavish with my colors. So yeah. I just go splashy, very bright colors to give this very mundane theme something nice and bright and happy. To really bring it to yes. life. Yes. <laughs> wonderful. And Aromi, I mean, you also serve on several boards. Um, you know, university boards as well as art gallery boards. Could you just tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, Minoli. At the moment, I am on the Arts Council's Painting and Sculpture Panel. Yeah. Uh, that's by the Cultural Ministry. Right. Uh, I'm also uh, serving on this new art gallery which is to be open. That's the J.D. Right. Perera Gallery. That's by the Visual Arts University. I'm on the... Uh, as a board member, I'm serving there as a board member. Yeah. And uh, also I have been on various panels for judging exhibitions. And I'm also uh, uh, visiting, like, not visiting, I'm sorry, uh, external examiner for the, the Visual Arts University for their entrance examinations. Wow, so where do you find the time to paint uh -huh. with all of <laughs> That's this? a good question. <laughs> Actually, I'm able to multitask right. my work. And so I'm fairly a well, very well managed, time managed person yeah. to some extent. Yeah, no, well, artists you need are to not, be. <laughs> yes. So that's how I, uh, you know, manage to do all this and plus my home, my family uh -huh. and whatever the social commitments that you have. And Arabi, I mean, what sort of message would you have for young budding artists? Um, you know, what would you say to them? How would you encourage them to kind of keep to their, to their trade and keep true to themselves? Actually, we have a lot of talented artists yeah. today, as you can see yes. all over on the streets yeah. and you know. And in different, what's interesting is it's in very different forms of art. It's That's not just right concentrated yes. in one aspect yes. of it. But what I would like to tell them is to be uh, very uh, creative yeah. and not go, uh, you know, on a particular style, yeah. not be a slave to a style, but keep on experimenting yeah. and not try to emulate their teachers and, you know, that is happening in a big way. Really? Yes. And you can't say one from the other, which oh is no, not right, because at some point of time, they're going to get stuck in that particular style and they can't go beyond. Yeah. But whereas in an artist you want to see some development, development in style, yeah. colour, theme, all that happens. But when you're a young artist, you try to think you have to emulate your teacher, right. which is not the thing. But yeah. be very creative and yeah. very free with your brush and line and form. And find your own voice, yes. really. Which is, and I mean, you know, serving on all these boards and working with all these up-and-coming artists, it must be very rewarding to see how far we've progressed um, or how far far we've come. Yes, it is. Uh. But it's very sad that we don't get any kind of uh, patronage for the arts. Really? Yes, There's... we get very little or none at all. Oh. So I think it's time for the, at least for the private sector, the to government, step up. To, yes, yeah. and help the artists because yeah. we got so much of talent out there. And it would be an absolute shame yes. to, to just lose it. Um, what for you would you say has been one of the most, I mean, do you have a particular painting that's an absolute favorite of yours? Do you have one piece of art where you think, oh my God, you know, I just, this is it, I love this. Uh. Yes, there are about two or three which I've kept in my collection. Uh -huh. And I won't part with it. I have been having people ringing me and asking, <laughs> are you ready to sell it now? And I say, no. Yes, there are paintings which you really get very attached to. Yeah. And, I mean, when you have an exhibition and, and you've got all this fabulous work, I mean, it must be quite hard to actually have to part with it as well. Yes, it know? is, it is. Uh, <laughs> because you take so much of time and pride doing that work. Yeah. And then suddenly, well, it has happened to me, I have sold it. And then I have thought, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> because there are pieces, you, I mean, I do just one of a kind. Yes. I don't go on yeah. mass producing my work. Yeah. So once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, and I mean, it also must be incredible when you go somewhere and you see um, a piece of your art, you know, there and somewhat, yes. you know, being appreciated by, by the people who bought it. I mean, that must be a real sort of give you a wonderful feeling, a real sort of sense of pride. 
Yes, uh. it often happens, yeah. <laughs> Irumi, I also understand that um, your work has been selected by the Presidential Collection. I mean, that must have been an incredible um, experience. How did, how did that happen? I mean, uh, how... Actually, there was a team that was uh, collecting paintings yeah. for the Presidential Collection. Yeah. And uh, my paint, two of my paintings were selected for that. Wow. And now it's hanging in the President's house. Have you been able to see them up there on the wall? No, they invited? no, no. Well, I think you should invite her <laughs> <laughs> over. <laughs> And also there was a painting of mine which was gifted to the Prime Minister of India. Okay. Those wow. are moments, you know, you really feel yeah, good. Yeah, real sort of moments, yes. real yes. sort of highlights of, yes. of your career, really. Um, and I'm, you've had many. I was actually just reading about you the other day and I was like, my goodness, you've had just an amazing career. Um, and hopefully, you know, we'll be seeing a lot more of your work as well. I mean, how many paintings would you say that you do... Um, sort of within a year, would you, you kind of sit down and say, okay, um, I'm just going to paint when, I, when, it, when it inspires me? Um, or do you think, okay, I, I need to sort of do X amount? Or how does, I'm really interested in, in the process behind... Oh, what happens, Binoli, is no, I don't have a number. Yeah. It's just that I work practically every day. Right. I work, start work in the morning. Yeah. My day starts at five o'clock in the morning. Right. And uh, once I drop my daughter in school, then yeah. I start working. And then again, I don't paint after she comes home. Okay. And then in the night again, I work till one o'clock, two o'clock, depends. Wow, and then yeah. you're up at five. Yes. My goodness. <laughs> uh, there are days like that. It doesn't happen every day. Yeah. Uh, but there are days. I mean, that's the time when I don't get disturbed yeah. and I can work. But there are no numbers. I can work so many paintings for the week. I wow. actually work on about three paintings at a time. Oh, really? So you've yeah. got different... Yes. Wow, that's very So it's not that I finish one painting and then take the yeah. next. You've got... Yes. That must be quite... I mean, and it's, I find it very interesting, actually. And I, I really want to ask you about your creative inspiration. I mean, really, where, have you come from an artistic family, an artistic background? Or are you the only sort of... Um... Oh, no. My mother is very creative. Yeah. I think I got my talents from her. Okay. She can put her hand into anything and, you know, she does porcelain paintings, to various creative things. And um, do you also sort of, when you're working, I mean, you must have a special space um, that you work in. Are people, you know, is it totally enclosed away from the rest of the house? Are people allowed to come in and sort of pop in and see you while you're working? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately not. I close my door in my studio yeah. and it's like kind of meditation, you know. Yeah. I'm with my canvas and my paints yeah. and I do not like to be disturbed so I don't answer the phone. Uh -huh. And my maids don't come and answer the, my they door as well. They have strict instructions to Very leave strict you alone. <laughs> till 1, 1.30 they are not allowed to speak to me <laughs> because that's my only precious yeah. time for working yeah. and I just can't afford to get disturbed during that time. Mm. And uh, so it's uh, a wonderful source of, you know, having to be with yourself, your studio, your work, yeah. paints, and that's it. Oh, wonderful. Well, Arumi, we're going to take another little break. Um, please don't go anywhere. We've got the lovely and incredibly talented Arumi Wijay Wadhana. So we'll see you after this short break. Welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, if you've missed the first half of the show, shame on you. <laughs> we have the lovely, talented Iromi Wajay Wadhana with us here today. Um, Iromi, you've said that art is the ideal um, sort of job or the ideal um, thing for a woman to get into. Tell us why you feel that way. Uh, because you can schedule your own time. Yeah. You can work from home. Uh -huh. And uh, that's something really good because uh, you don't have to go to office, you are your own boss. Yeah. And then you can work at your own time space. <laughs> and how do you deal, I mean, with your fans? I know you have a lot of them, actually. We met quite a few of them while we were doing the research for the show. I mean, how do you sort of deal with being a sort of celebrity, I, I guess, in your, in your own right? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> it's nice. It's really nice. Nice meeting people. I have people ringing me from the... Places like Anuradhapura, Purundam, yeah. Kandy, 
who wanted to come and come and see my uh, atelier. Yeah. They all most welcome. They do come. Yeah. And uh, it's very nice having people who appreciate appreciate your work. your work and you know admire your work and encourage you. Uh, which is lovely. And have you, as a as an artist, have you been influenced by lots of different artists? I mean, who would you say has been a, a sort of big influence on your life, if you like? Uh, I think Amrita Sherjil from right. India. Okay. Uh, she was a very, very uh, strong yeah. uh, artist. Yeah. And she was also painting women. Right, okay. And I think she has influenced my work quite a bit. Yeah. Wonderful. Romy, I wanted to ask you actually about your husband because a, a friend of our, a friend of yours actually told us that he's like your good luck charm, which I thought was a really <laughs> lovely sentiment. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> actually, she, she would have said that because uh, everything of mine, yeah. uh, I graduated after I got married. Right. I won all my awards after I have got married. Right. And everything to do with my art world, except, other than the one I had in... Uh, 73 when I was in school yeah. and also in 1978 was my very first international show where my mother yeah. accompanied me to Bombay. Wow. Uh, other than that everything else happened after I got married so that may be why she would have said it. <laughs> so how did you two meet? Uh, I think just way back in 1974 I think uh -huh. a common friend introduced us. Okay wonderful and it was love at first sight? Or? Yes of course it was something like a Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Story. Oh really? Do you yes. tell us a little bit more? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm such a private person. And you have a daughter as well, yes. and she's, she's in school at the moment. Yes. How old is she? She's 17 years. Okay, wow. And does, is she following in your footsteps in the sense that she is she also quite creative? Yes, yeah, she's very good at drawing, yeah. but uh, I wouldn't like to encourage her to do that because. Right. Uh, it's a difficult profession to be in yeah. and uh, it needs a lot of commitment, a lot of hard work and it depends whether your style is going to be accepted, whether you are going to make the grade. Yeah. So I just let her go on her, her own line her up. Own yes. Okay, wonderful. And um, what do you do, I mean, when you're not painting to relax and sort of take oh, a break? Okay. <laughs> I love to take an art architectural digest book. And okay. that's like therapy for me. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I just take that and keep flipping through the pages, read about the various designers, the architects, yeah. interior designers. Wow. Uh, in fact, that is really a good source for me to relax with. Yeah. I mean, if you weren't an artist, if you weren't a painter, do you think you would have liked to have gone into architecture? I would have. I think yeah. my father wanted me at one point. Right. But I'm very bad at numbers. Okay. So that <laughs> That's why it works out very well for me to be married to a chartered accountant because he does my Everything. yeah my figures and all that kind of thing. You know, throughout your career, I'm just going to go back to this again because okay. I sort of touched on it yeah. a little bit earlier. You said you had an international exhibition in Bombay. Yes. Uh, you know, have you had any others after that overseas or? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. plenty. I had in Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, right. India, or oh, India. Of course, Singapore, wow. London, Paris. My God, so you've been around the world, traveling the world with your art. And do you sort of, how does that process work? Do you get invited to come and exhibit or a gallery contacts you? Or? Yes, most of these have been cultural exchanges right. with, uh, with the two countries, Sri Lanka and all these countries. Yeah. And I have gone for some private exhibitions also, but most of them have been, you know, with these cultural okay. exchanges. Okay, wonderful. And when you're sort of selecting your work, I mean, do you think about the place that you're going to before you decide what art to take or what's the process involved behind that when when you exhibit um do you look at your pieces of work and say okay well i think this would kind of go really well with that audience or do you just take the ones that you love <laughs> uh no not really well if i i exhibit only when i have a good selection right or a co good collection so it depends at that time what i have yeah and uh, that's it's that's how it goes. And um, Iromi, do you sort of, do people kind of contact you and sort of commission work from you as well? Oh yes, yeah. yes. I work with interior designers. Okay, wonderful. And apart from that, uh, yes, I do get a lot of commission work. Yeah. And so, I mean, 
do people kind of say, okay, well, I would really like these colours, or I'd like... I mean, do you do sort of um, portrait work as well? No, I don't do you per don't portrait at all. At all. Uh, I have people from overseas sending photographs of yeah. their sitting areas and their offices and various places. And then you think, okay. Yes, and uh, that's how I start working with uh, my overseas uh, buyers right. uh, because uh, they are so very particular. I had yeah. recently, I had even pe people sending me like this color patches and oh, really? you know, okay. their upholstery and everything. Wow. Yes. <sighs> So, I mean, that must help as well. It must be really yes. nice to see the space that you're creating yes, for. Yes, yes. Great. And um, tell us a little bit more, Iromi. Actually, I want to touch on your husband again. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> the curious. The good luck charm. To, yes, your good luck charm. How many years have you been married for? You said 1970? 29. Wow, yes, yes. okay. We got married in 1980. Yeah. And does your husband also dabble in, in creative... Um, is he a creative person as well, or accounts as most of No, he's thing? my best critic. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, he's uh, very supportive yeah. and uh, encourages me a lot. When he doesn't see a painting on the easel, he asks, how come you have not painted today, kind of thing. <laughs> very supportive yeah. and encourages me. At the same time, he criticizes my work as well, which I really need. Uh. And uh, yeah, that's how it goes and gives me all the freedom and time to work. Which is wonderful, yes. which is, you know. Yeah, because you need hours and hours of time at yeah. your easel and you can't afford to just work for a few hours and yeah. leave your brush aside and yeah. go off. So that means there might be a little bit of, uh, you know, neglect uh. in the home front, maybe. Uh. I try not to, but yeah. you know, you never know. Uh. But it's wonderful to, I think it's very important to have a man behind you who supports and actually understands um, yes. what, what you're doing. Yeah. Great, well, we've got something actually in the next segment which is called the Confession Cam, where we've spoken to some of your colleagues and, and friends and they've kind of given us, shared an insight with us as to who they feel you are. Um, so we're gonna actually come back after this little break and Thank take you. a look at that. So don't go anywhere, we've got the lovely and incredibly talented Iromi Wijay Wardena um, and we'll be right back after this short break. So we'll see you then. Welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, Iromi and I have been chatting actually about her creative process and her inspiration. Um, and we're now actually going to take a look, Iromi, at what your friends and your peers have to say about you. Um, it's all good, I promise. So <laughs> <laughs> why don't we take a look at that now? Iromi, I, I met her as a painter, artist, sometime before at St. Uncle's Gallery. And uh, I, I like, number one, I like a painting very much. And uh, unlike other artists, uh, she is very helpful and very cooperative with us. And uh, she, she promoted me in the Sarkar meeting somewhere in 2002, if I'm not mistaken, 2003. And I, before that, I've been selling in India also. But uh, after participating in Sarkar meet with Hiromi, my painting appreciated value. It's more than fivefold. I was able to fetch, and I'm, I'm really thankful to her for that matter. And where the painting concerned, she used the palette knife technique, and she was uh, demonstrating how she does it. And uh, <laughs> business secret or trade secret, she said there's nothing called secret. It's only your talent and how you do it. And I have no. Uh, hesitation in talking anything with her in my career and and my personal drawbacks and uh, tragedies or whatever it is and recently also there was a problem popped up uh, when it came to a, a selling of a painting and she advised me how do you do the commission work commission work in the sense Somebody tell you to uh, do some painting, particularly for them. And I had some problem with that. And she helped me out of that problem. Iromi is a lovely person, very quiet, very sweet person. And what a lot of people don't know about her is that she helps a lot of other less privileged artists. She, I know personally that she has helped a lot of people financially and all that, but no big talk about it. All very, you know, hush hush, 
and uh, there have been a number of instances where she went out of her way to help people who are involved with art and uh, you know financially and otherwise she's a wonderful friend ever ready to help you in anything there have been there was an occasion where a painting my mother is also an artist you know and there was a painting that my mom had done which had got slightly damaged and i just called her i said iromi is there anything you can do to touch this painting up and in a flash she said oh bring it over and she was she is very helpful very nice she is wonderful person and we know her husband as well they are both a very nice couple i believe that he is her good luck charm because after she became iromi vijayawardena things began to happen in her life for some time now i've uh, commissioned iromi Uh, to do paintings for me for uh, some of my interior decor projects uh, i've known her to be um, a very easy person to work with uh, very accommodative um, and uh, a really a pleasure pleasure to work with her her commitment was such uh, that she would uh, she would visit the sites and um, study the project uh, and have a number of meetings with me uh, the, regarding color concept themes uh, before she would come up with any of her paintings the final product uh, i've taken a number of uh, foreign clients to see her her work and um, they have been very impressed with her paintings she's a um, very polite she's very kind um and i think she's very accommodative with the work and she um, is a very gentle person she's a, so she's a, i can say she's a nice friend a nice person to be with <laughs> well lots of lovely things i had to say about you i think the main thing that came through with that is that you just seem to help a lot of people um young budding upcoming artists but you don't seem to sort of talk about it but i'm going to get you to talk about it on the show <laughs> <laughs> you have to be not yes to go along yeah and when you reach a particular height i think it's time we help the others uh, also to get up to that point to yeah give something yes. back and i mean so do you have like a lot of your young students i guess that that you work with um uh Actually I I used to have a, a, a school of art. Yeah. Um 17 years ago when my daughter was born I closed it down. Okay. So I used to have university students coming and doing their internships. That yeah. was the time when I was doing textile designing as well. So right. they used to come actually on the textile design side yeah. for their designing and printing okay. uh projects. Right. So I used to have people like that coming. and then there has to be students coming from Peradeniya University where they are given an assignment okay. and they have chosen to do uh, uh some writing on my work okay wow so they need a lot of information from oh. me that's right so yeah i have students like that coming in as well well we were going to take another little break okay. um but when we come back i have what we refer to as the dreaded 10 okay. where i put you on the spot and ask you a series of questions okay um but we'll have that it's quite good fun so We'll have that after this little break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back uh with more from Naomi. Hi and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh we've been having a really lovely chat uh with Naomi Vijay Wardena, an incredibly talented artist, um who I'm now going to put on the spot and ask her a series of dreaded questions. Um Iromi, I just want you to give me the first answer that pops into your head. Yeah? Okay. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay, let's do this. A tree, a waterfall, or the human figure. Um where do you think the most beauty lies? Human figure. Human figure. <laughs> Is there a song that would best describe you? I can't think of anything. Okay, <laughs> we'll come back to that. Are you ever rude to strangers? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Hope not. Yeah. Which do you think is harder, to tell someone that you don't like them or to tell someone that you like them? The first. Yeah. Uh. 
What would you do free of charge? Catching up panties. <laughs> What would be the first thing you would do if you saw two people fighting on the street? Well, I like to get away from that. I yeah. wouldn't want to be in there. <laughs> Is a glass half empty or half full? Half empty. <laughs> half empty, okay. <laughs> How do you respond to negative criticism? Very well. Yeah. It's very welcome. I'm terrible with that. <laughs> well, really bad. Being an artist, you have to. Yeah. You have to. Because all the time it happens. Yeah. Mm. What career, other than your own, would you have liked to have tried? Architecture. Yeah. What's your favourite colour? Turquoise blue. Okay, wow. <laughs> That's a lovely, strong <laughs> colour. Yes. Okay. Well, that was it. That was the dreaded 10. Thank you. Well, Unfortunately, we've got to the end of the program, which is a shame. But thank you so much, Aromi, um, for coming on. It's been a really lovely, I've had a lovely time uh, chatting to you, and thank you very much. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Thank you, Mina. Uh, um, for all of you at home, we will be back next week with another guest, so don't forget to tune in. Uh, in the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about the show and read up on our, uh, the people we've interviewed, do log on to our website. It's www.etvpowerwomen.blogspot.com. Um, that's a bit of a mouthful, and I'm surprised I got it right, but do log on to that. Um, so until next week, um, goodbye, and don't forget to tune in. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay.